Hey, everybody, and welcome back to For the Booze. For the Booze. For the Booze. I feel like we do the same introduction every week. <laughs> but anyways, we are back, and I have exciting news. We have not a listener story, but multiple listener stories. Yay! I'm so excited. Amazing. Oh my gosh. I'm so stinking excited. Stinking. Stinking. <laughs> you sound like your mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are going to start off with this week. We are going to read a story from a Mr. Joe Mattern. I hope I said your last name right. That's how it appears. Uh, I've actually talked to him before. Okay. He has, uh, he, ta- he, Reached out to us when we did the Crescent episode, and uh, this is going to be his listener story. (gasps) Okay, I'm ready. My first ghost experience was at the Farnsworth House in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, when I was 16. We started in the attic where there were sharpshooters, I can't remember if Union or Confederate, and at least one of these men perished. I felt a heavy presence and got very emotional in this location. I later found out that I'm sensitive to this kind of activity. We then went to the basement and was touched by a child spirit, I believe. It almost felt like a hug as my whole stomach area was very cold. We spent the night in a room and were awoken around 2 a.m. to heavy footsteps in our room. No one was there. We also felt the bed sink as if a person sat on the bed. The innkeeper believes this is the dad of the previously mentioned kid that passed away in the 1800s. He is looking for his kid that passed young by being trampled by a horse. This would make a good story for your haunted houses segment. There's a lot of Civil War history in this home. So maybe, just maybe we'll uh, we'll look into this house. What? Maybe we'll do an episode on it. Oh my gosh. Thanks, Joe. I, yeah. Thank you. And you discovered you were pretty sensitive pretty young. I mean, 16, that's kind of young. To... Well, you're, you're pretty sensitive. I was crying. <laughs> <laughs> but good. yes, Joe, I am sensitive as well <laughs> in that sense. Oh. Not, the, not the sense that Stephen threw out, <laughs> but that too, I guess. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I, you know, I don't think I've, I've really had any super strong experiences like that. So mm-hmm. that's really cool. I enjoyed that. That if is you, cool. If you have any more stories, send them in. We will read them. And I guess inside that was a listener's suggestion as well. Absolutely. So we will definitely be looking into that. I know that Gettysburg area is definitely known to have some spooky ookies well, going on over there. It's not the first time that a listener has brought up Gettysburg to us. Correct. So. I, know. I think it's time to travel to Gettysburg, Whoa. but not this week. We're not too far from it, though. No, this week we are going to be in uh, the land of milk and honey. I mean, just uh, the absolute pinnacle of American life. The beauty, the, the beauty, uh, the picturesque. Uh, just. I just don't need, I, there aren't words for it. We're going to Cleveland, <laughs> Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> and again, like last week, I'm, I'm sorry, but you already know. <laughs> I, I'm per, I've personally never been to uh, Cleveland, but I have known many people who have been there and it's pretty much always been the same uh, story I get. So I am <laughs> just going off of what I heard. This isn't <laughs> me. But we are going to travel to a very well-known place to Cleveland. However, I don't think it's very well-known to everybody. Ooh. And we are going to go to a place called the Tiedemann House, also known as Franklin Castle. Now, this is a house. Don't let the name fool you. Okay. This is a home in Cleveland. Now, Hmm. it does look like a castle, but it is, it's a home, and it has been a home for a really long time. Wow. And I think we should go ahead and get into the history of the Franklin Castle. And once again, the almighty beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> All right. Let's, Let's do it. The 
Cleveland was established on July 22, 1796, by surveyors of the Connecticut Land Company when they laid out Connecticut's western reserve into townships and a capital city. They named the new settlement Cleveland after their leader, General Moses Cleveland, a veteran of the American Revolutionary War. Cleveland oversaw the New England-style design of the plan for what would become the modern downtown area, centered on Public Square, before returning to Connecticut, never again to visit Ohio. The first permanent European settler in Cleveland was Lorenzo Carter, who built a cabin on the banks of the Cuyahoga River. The emerging community served as an important supply post for the U.S. during the Battle of Lake Erie in the War of 1812. Locals adopted Commodore Oliver Hazard Perry as a civic hero and erected a monument in his honor decades later. Largely through the efforts of the settlement's first lawyer, Alfred Kelly, the village of Cleveland was incorporated on December 23, 1814. In spite of the nearby swampy lowlands and harsh winters, the town's waterfront location proved to be an advantage, giving it access to Great Lakes trade. It grew rapidly over the 1832 completion of the Ohio and Erie Canal. Ohio City is one of the oldest neighborhoods in Cleveland, Ohio. It is located immediately west of the Cuyahoga River. Ohio City became an independent municipality on March 3, 1836, when it split from the Brooklyn Township. The city would grow from a population of 2,400 people in the early 1830s to over 4,000 in 1850. The municipality was then later annexed by Cleveland on June 5, 1854. James A. Garfield, who became the 20th President of the United States, frequently preached at Franklin Circle Christian Church in 1857. Franklin Circle Christian Church is located at the intersection of Franklin Boulevard and Fulton Road. The birthplace of John Heisman, famous for the annual Heisman Trophy awarded to the best player in college football, is located in Ohio City. He was born in the neighborhood in 1869, and an Ohio Historical Society marker stands in commemoration near the corner of Bridge Ave and West 29th Place. The high Victorian, eclectic-style stone house located on the north side of Franklin Boulevard, across from West 44th Street, is still known to many Clevelanders as, quote, Franklin Castle. The home has been a witness to much of the history of Cleveland's west side and the 125 years of its existence. Tiedemann House was built in 1881 by Hans Tiedemann, a German immigrant who became prosperous first as a wholesale grocer and then later as a banker. The house was designed by the famed Cleveland architectural firm Cuddle & Richardson. When Tiedemann built the house in the late 19th century, Franklin Boulevard was one of the most upscale residential avenues in Cleveland, perhaps second only to the famed Euclid Avenue's Millionaire's Row. Tiedemann built his grand house on Franklin Boulevard, not only to provide a more upscale residence for his family, but also to provide a temporary place for friends, family, and others immigrating from Germany to stay when they first arrived in Cleveland. The house replaced an earlier house on the property, which was raised during the construction of the new house. Hans, his wife Louise, and their two surviving children, Augusta and Dora, moved into the new house in 1883. There, the two children grew to adulthood. Both children later married and provided Hans and Louise with a total of six grandchildren, all of which were boys. However, on January 15, 1881, Tiedemann's 15-year-old daughter, Emma, would succumb to diabetes. The property then saw its second death not long afterwards when Tiedemann's elderly mother, Wybeka, died. During the next three years, the family would bury three more children, giving rise to speculation that there was more to the deaths than meet the eye. To distract his wife from these tragedies, Tiedemann began extensive construction on the home, 
adding a ballroom which runs the length of the house on the fourth floor of the manor. Also, during this building, turrets and gargoyles were added to the edifice's facade, giving the house an even more pronounced castle appearance. In this period, he allegedly also started building secret halls and tunnels within the house. Why he did this is unclear, but according to legend, Louise used these tunnels to escape her husband's bad temper. When Louise later died in 1895 at the age of only 57 years old, more strange things would come to the surface. People claimed Hans had several love affairs, sometimes even in the house itself. He allegedly forced women to have sex with him, and it was even rumored he also committed murder in the house. It is rumored that hidden rooms and passageways were used for bootlegging during Prohibition. Though rumored, none of these rooms or passageways existed other than a small stairway used by the servants from the kitchen to the front door. Hans would then sell the house shortly after Louise's death to the Mulhauser family. He remarried to Henrietta, a waitress, but the marriage would end in divorce just a year later. Hans himself died in 1908 because of a massive stroke while taking a walk in the park. He outlived his entire family, even his grandchildren. There was nobody left to claim his inheritance, and the German Mulhauser family would sell the house to the German Socialist Party in 1913. Franklin Castle was also supposed to be a place for meetings and parties, but instead the house would be used as a place for Nazis to live. Legend says 20 people were killed in the house with machine guns because of political disagreements. Later, residents claimed that they could hear the fight over and over again inside the house. After that, the house remained vacant for a while until it was bought in 1968 by James Romano and his family. His wife had always been fascinated by the large mansion and wanted to turn it into a restaurant, but allegedly, the ghosts that resided there made sure that that didn't happen. When the Romanos were busy restoring Franklin Castle, Mrs. Romano sent the children upstairs to play. A while later, the four children would come downstairs to ask for cookies, and they wanted to take an extra cookie to give to the sad girl who was crying upstairs. When Mrs. Romano went up with them, she saw nobody there. But the children insisted they played with other children up there all the time, and not just with the crying girl. Clearly, the idea of ghost children scared Mrs. Romano. It is also alleged that while the Romanos didn't own an organ, the house would often be filled with the sound of organ music on a regular occasion. Also, footsteps sound of voices, and turning ceiling lamps made the family get help from some paranormal investigators. During one investigation, one of them even ran out of the house screaming and a priest was asked to perform an exorcism. The priest told them that there were evil spirits in the house and that they should leave because they were too powerful to remove. And in 1974, they did just that. The house would then be sold to Sam Muscatello, who wanted to turn the place into a church. Unfortunately, all the ghost stories didn't help turning it into a church, so he decided to turn Franklin Castle into a tourist attraction. He opened the house to the public and gave people tours. Those not afraid could also spend the night there. He wanted to make a profit out of the ghost stories. He was allegedly also intrigued by all the secret passageways and tunnels, and he decided to explore the house. In one of the hidden rooms, he made a gruesome discovery. It is claimed that he found human bones. He then took his story to the media, but some people would claim that he placed the bones there himself to seek more attention. Unfortunately for him, the tourists would stay away, but the strange stories would still continue. In 1982, The location was added to the National Register of Historic Places. In early 1984, Judy Garland's fifth and last husband purchased Franklin Castle and almost immediately started making major renovations to the house. Over the next 10 years, he spent close to $1 million renovating the castle, 
even going as far to track down some of the original furnishings for the castle. Despite all this, he would still put the house up for sale in 1994. There have been a series of owners in the past 30 years. The castle was empty from 94 until 1999, when Michelle Heimberger bought the castle and carriage house for $350,000, using part of her Yahoo.com stock as one of the company's early employees. A native Clevelander, Heimberger was fascinated with the home and purchased it with the intention of restoring the building to its former glory. Unfortunately, that same year, a fire would badly damage the castle. Though extensive repairs were done, the house restoration could not be completed. Later, in 2004, there were rumors that Franklin Castle was going to be completely renovated and turned into the Franklin Castle Club. As of 2006, the entire club was proven to be a complete sham. No repairs have ever been made and the pictures on the website were all either close-up shots of individual architecture or pictures that were stolen from other websites. No work had ever been done, no memberships had ever been sold, and there was also evidence that the castle had been used to shoot adult films and images. Around this time, though, the exterior stone of the building was cleaned and the parapet on the left side of the facade was rebuilt according to the 18th century design. The property would see hard times again in March 2011, when the carriage house badly damaged in a fire. It was announced in July 2011 that the Franklin Castle had been rezoned to allow it to become a three-family dwelling, and that a sale was pending. European tapestry artist Chiara Don Dallet purchased Franklin Castle in 2011 for $260,000. The Cleveland Building and Housing Department issued a permit for residential exterior alterations in February 2012. Local news sources have reported that the buyer intends to convert the building into three-family homes and dwellings in two of the spaces. Following several years of historic renovations, the owners announced single-night accommodations were available for guests on December 24, 2022. And while this catches us up to date on the castle as of today, it has also been featured in different paranormal shows throughout the last few years. On March 18, 2016, the reality TV series Paranormal Lockdown featured the Franklin Castle in the third episode of its first season. On March 5, 2020, Franklin Castle was also featured on the fifth episode of Season 19 of Ghost Adventures, which aired on the Travel Channel. On November 19, 2020, Franklin Castle was featured on Episode 4, Season 2 of The Holzer Files, which also aired on the Travel Channel. As of today, Franklin Castle is a private residence. Its current owners are pretty silent on any recent hauntings but the house does remain a popular stop on Cleveland ghost tours. Though it's only viewable from the outside, haunting aficionados claim that the ghost of Louise Tiedemann can be seen standing in the window. But we suppose that, in that way, Franklin Castle will keep its secrets. Its soaring turrets, delicate details, and striking windows might mask some horrific crimes, or they may simply symbolize how one immigrant's American dream became a devastating nightmare. Wow. That was um that was a pretty in-depth history. I liked that. That was sad that he outlived every single one of his family members, including his grandkids. Well, I'd say what isn't sad is that he raped and killed people in the house or so they claim. So okay. he was potentially a serial killer. Well, good. Then he had to live with that for a really long time. I don't think he cared. Well, there's he more. Should. There's more stories to that that you're going to get to read. Oh. Very detailed. Detailed. No, I'm just kidding. They're not very detailed. Oh, okay, good. Oh, but like, we, but, oh, God. But we do get to hear some more about it. Uh, but I have to say, like, nobody knows for sure what really happened there. Right. It's just speculated. It's all, you'll hear the word allegedly and claimed and Mm -hmm. all those words a lot. But it is, some people truly believe 
that some some stuff happened in this house and that he killed his whole family. Now, I wonder because they brought up the, the whole secret rooms and tunnels and like it made it seem like this big elaborate thing. But then it said again, like, well, it was a tunnel for the server okay. servants to get from the kitchen to the front door. Like, so what was really being said there is that. It's claimed, allegedly, <laughs> that when he had the house renovated, it, there was a bunch of secret passageways added. But mm-hmm. as far as any experts have been able to determine going in there, that they have never found anything. Hmm. They, they found one passageway that was used primarily for servants to go from the kitchen to the front door. Gotcha. That's it. So hmm. it's all... I mean, it's just all allegations. Nobody knows for sure. That's I think that's one of the things that makes this place pretty cool. Yeah. Is that there's a lot of mystery to this house. And to this day, there's still a lot to this day that people don't know about Franklin Castle. That's crazy, too. Like, it's very interesting because you get, like, the new owners that come in and they go and do re- redecorating and renovating and things like that. Like, and you think, hey, yeah. We've found these things, but maybe he was just really good at hiding stuff. I don't know. Well, this house has was open to people for a little while during a period of time. Mm-hmm. And then it was closed down for a period of time. And up until I think about the end of last year. So not, not very long. Yeah. Six months or so. It has just become open again. To Ooh. people, so we did find some reviews. Okay, but some of them are older, and some of them are very new. Oh, so I like that idea because some of them are very new. So people have been there, but for a long time, you you know, your reviews were people on the sidewalk looking right. at the place, and that's but people still showed up to see it. Like, right, this place is very interesting to me just because I don't know a lot about it. Even doing research, I still don't know a lot about it, and. This is one of the places I would love to visit because a a lot of people said going in there that uh, they went there because of the ghost stories, but then they found themselves inside so, like, taken with how beautiful and old the architecture was that they Mm -hmm. didn't care about the ghost stories anymore. Right. So I would love to see this place. Like, it must be really cool. Interesting. I don't want to live out my castle dreams (laughs) because I'm a big medieval nerd, just so everybody knows. (laughs) It's my favorite. Uh, This place has been visited by some pretty big names. It has. For sure. Um, I don't think these are all the names either. I think there's been more. Oh, I'm sure other people have been there, but like, of course, they're just going to throw out the biggies, you know? Well, you know, we're going to find out because while you're reading, I'm going to be searching for EVPs. Uh, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can find something, but... Either way, it's not going to take away from the fact that this place is pretty cool, but we do got to get into some uh, some spooky stories about this place. Oh, all right. So what do you say we go ahead and do that? But first, unfortunately, nobody's favorite part of the show. Oh. We have to uh, take an ad break. And now, Booze Crew, back to the show. (laughs) Franklin Castle began to develop its unconventional reputation all the way back in the 1920s. After it was sold by Mulhauser to the German Socialist Society, the castle allegedly became the site of illegal liquor production during Prohibition and a nest for Nazi spies during World War II. Reports of hauntings, however, didn't begin until around the 1960s. By then, a family with six children called the Romanos had moved into the house and were hoping to turn it into a restaurant. They instead found themselves battling the spirits of Franklin Castle. The hauntings allegedly began right away. On the day the Romanos moved in, two of their children said they'd encountered a crying girl in white on the third floor. But when Miss Romano investigated, no one was there. Soon, 
the family started hearing haunting organ music and heavy footsteps throughout the home. The two older Romano children woke up one night to find something yanking the blankets off their beds. <gasps> Miss Romano allegedly awoke one night to find herself screaming on her bedroom floor with an unseen presence screaming beside her. A priest advised the Romanos to move out and in 1974, they did. Miss Romano said the house was, quote, getting the best of her. She suspected she'd been haunted by Louise Tiedemann and speculated that the crying girl in white was Tiedemann's daughter, Emma. But the hauntings didn't stop when the Romanos left. The new owner, Sam Muscatello, tried to capitalize on the house's reputation by inviting local media to check out Franklin Castle. Many of them had strange experiences while exploring the property. A Cleveland radio host named John Webster described how something snatched his tape recorder and threw it down the stairs. Quote, I just stood there holding the microphone as I watched the tape recorder go flying down to the bottom of the stairs where it broke into pieces, he recalled. From there, the house was sold again, and again, and again. Each new occupant reported strange occurrences, like passing through odd vapors, hearing a child crying, or seeing a woman in black standing in the window. And as reports of hauntings at Franklin Castle increased, many turned their suspicion on its original owner, Hans Tiedemann. It seems tragedy had stalked Hans Tiedemann. While living in the house, he lost his mother, children, and wife. But many people have speculated that he may have had a hand in their deaths. Suddenly, Emma and Louise's deaths looked more suspicious than ever. Stories spread that Tiedemann had even murdered his niece, Karen, by hanging her from the rafters and killed his mistress in a jealous rage, along with a servant named Rachel, who wouldn't accept his advances towards her. Nick Groff and Katrina Weedman of Paranormal Lockdown visited Franklin Castle and spent 72 hours confined in the vacant rooms of the Grand Victorian Mansion in Cleveland, Ohio. The pair were the first paranormal team to investigate Franklin Castle, where dark and tragic family secrets are said to be locked away. Before arriving at the house, Nick said he couldn't wait to dig deep at this location. He said, quote, The anticipation of getting to this location is driving me crazy. It's been 15 years to come to this location. I've been researching it. I know all the mysteries, all the legends, but I just don't know what factual and what's not. Katrina would say, quote, it's supposed to be one of the most haunted locations in the United States, and we're the first ones to do it, so we don't know what's waiting for us. Upon arriving at the house, Nick and Katrina were joined by a paranormal investigator named John Tenney. While walking around the eerie house with him, Nick suddenly feels as if he saw a figure walk by them. At the same moment, John claims to have seen a shadow. As they attempted to continue, the team found that the batteries in John's mic pack had mysteriously died. Nick said, quote, Having this much happen in our first hour here is incredible. After a brief chat with Jim 
and Dee Romano about their experiences as former residents of the house. The duo turned out the lights, switched their cameras to night vision, and began their first evening of investigation. Because of the claims of the young girl named Emma, who liked to play hide-and-seek in the basement, Nick and Katrina started off the night with an impromptu game. It was all fun and games, until Nick felt like something suddenly touched the back of his leg in the dark. He described it as feeling like he had been tagged as part of the game. They would then start to hear knocking sounds around them. Nick would tag Katrina, which meant she was it. Nick then went to hide. While Katrina counted to ten and encouraged any spirits that were present to knock to give her a clue where they were hiding. A knocking sound then came from upstairs. And the sound was so clear that Katrina thought it was Nick. Just then, the team paused their game when they thought they'd caught something on their camera. But after playing the footage back, there didn't seem to be anything there. After the distraction, they would continue their search for Emma, which led them to an abandoned room upstairs. Nick said when he walked upstairs, it felt like he passed through a field of static electricity. He said, Quote, it's like whatever was downstairs moved up here away from us. After a few hours of sleep, they would resume their investigation. They focused their attention on the former room of Louise Tiedemann, who has been claimed to be the figure seen wearing black in the first floor windows. Nick climbed into a closet with a black and charred door that was damaged during an arson attack. He said that his time in the closet drained him of his energy. Then, Katrina shut herself into the closet and attempted to capture some EVPs using a handheld digital audio recorder. Katrina said she wasn't getting much in the closet, so she came out to review the audio. When playing it back, the pair felt that they captured what they thought sounded like an angry voice on the recording. They concluded that the garbled voice said, Seven. Moments later, while conducting another paranormal experiment, they heard a sound running away from them. Nick chased the sound downstairs. He then crouched down and grabbed his audio recorder. But over his shoulder... The cameraman, Rob, noticed a low, dark mist forming on camera. Nick said, quote, Capturing this anomaly, this mist that just appeared in the air on the camera and just disappeared, that's groundbreaking to me. I've never seen something like that in all of my years of investigating, and I am absolutely blown away right now. But I'm excited at the same time. Katrina added, quote, In my 10 years of doing this, I have never seen anything like that with my own eyes or captured it on camera. After all the excitement, the two found different parts of the house to set up their beds and try to get some sleep. Nick set up motion sensors around his bed And it wasn't long before something unseen triggered them and disturbed his sleep. A little while later, Nick tried another EVP session. He captured a scratching sound, which he thought sounded like a voice saying, I need help. On their final night in the house, Nick said that they had really connected with the ghost of Emma, who they think reached out for their help. But Nick and Katrina didn't yet know how to help her. 
they would discuss the problem of Emma and how to help her, but they failed to come to any conclusion on how to help in any way. While there aren't many reviews regarding the paranormal on the internet, we were able to actually find a few. Carla Conti writes, quote, Ghost picture. As a 50th birthday gift from my best friend, we stayed the night on March 4th, 2023, in Joanne's room. It was the greatest experience I have had ever. Jen's, pronounced Jan's, was amazing, and the detailed history tour of the castle, past owners and property, really focusing on genuinely living in the experience of an 1800s castle without any influence. No scare tactics, nothing planted, just your own experience. And yes, I did capture a ghostly figure in a picture I took in the butler's quarters. We would definitely go back again, hoping in the future the overnight could be longer than just one night. A Google review by the name of XX writes, quote, I have been in it approximately 2008-ish. Beautiful inside, haunted inside. Going up the main staircase into the room to the direct right at the top of the stairs. It all went slow motion and cartoonish. The air was thick. I explored the room there. The attic was also very haunted and still being renovated. I went into the haunted front round room where the spirit of the black lady is said to be. I didn't see or feel her. I thought the other room in the attic were much more scary. Also, the very top of that staircase, something always was going on right there. I took tons of pictures on an expensive new Canon digital camera. Not even one came out. Beautifully haunted place. Go in if you ever have the chance. I feel lucky that I have had the chance. It has been called the most haunted house in Ohio, with a story that is rich in murder and paranormal activity. But how much of it is true? Quote, It's this allure that draws people in, said Bill Kregge, co-author of Haunted Franklin Castle. Quote, There are stories that the original owner of the house might have murdered family members. There are stories of bootlegging and Nazi spying and mass execution. But allegedly, none of the stories are true. Then, there are the things you can just not explain. Quote, It's footsteps crossing the ballroom on the top floor. Or it's somebody talking from another room. And you know you're the only one in the house. Or it's somebody running up the stairs and waking you up, you hear a child giggling. Bill believes that the giggle likely comes from the girl in white, the Tiedemann's daughter, Emma, who died from diabetes. He also believes there is another ghost in the house, the so-called Lady in Black, who may be Emma's mother, Louise Tiedemann. A dark figure is sometimes seen looking out of the windows. Franklin Castle is part of Cleveland Ghost Tours, and those who take part are hoping for a glimpse of the Lady in Black, the ghost that keeps watch from the tower window. There is still much to learn about this Cleveland treasure, but most of all, it's well worth the trip to drive or walk by and see or hear for yourself if there might be anything to the many rumors, sightings, and reported sounds of wailing, footsteps, and even crying children. A castle in Cleveland. 
Cleveland, Ohio. Could you imagine medieval nights in Cleveland? No. <laughs> well, unfortunately, <laughs> while you were reading, I was scouring the internet for EVPs, and it doesn't seem like we're going to get one, unfortunately. Oh, no. But I was right. A lot more people have been here, like Sam and Colby and Josh and like all those YouTube people that have wow. all been here. So if you would like to check this place out, I'm sure you can go over to YouTube or... You know, maybe you want to see Ghost Adventures or Paranormal Lockdown or Holzer Files or one of them, but they're... I say Paranormal Lockdown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which means we have seen it. I don't really remember this one though, if I'm being honest. I don't either. Um, I think maybe it was seem. I don't know. It seems it like it, especially for a season of a show. It might be more like a filler episode. I don't know. Kind of just I, thrown I, in there. I honestly I don't know. do not remember, but we have seen it. And it is out there, so if you want to see it too, maybe maybe we'll go watch it again because I just don't remember this one. <laughs> but it's pretty cool. I mean, it is definitely different. You know, a, a castle home in Cleveland. I've seen all the pictures of it. It's very cool looking. I would definitely live here if it wasn't in Cleveland. Huh. And it is open to the public as far as I know, so you can go check it out. I think you can stay the night there. So Super cool. Hey, if you want to sack up and go, let, let us know all about it. Or, hey, if you're a listener who's... <laughs> Been there because I'm pretty sure we do have at least one or you know a couple listeners out in Cleveland. So sorry for Cleveland. Sorry for trash talking Cleveland, but, <laughs> but I'll try you, to make up for it. Cleveland, Cleveland. But uh, but you know, so if you've been there, <laughs> if you've been, and even if you got some pictures or something, send them in. We'll share them on our uh, social media. That'd yeah, be cool. Super cool. But yeah, so Frankie Castle. <laughs> Frankie. Frankly Castle? Frankly Castle. Frankly. <laughs> it's a castle in Cleveland. <laughs> but uh, this is, you know, there's a part in the show where we've heard the history of it and we've listened to the ghost stories of it. And I'm supposed to ask you this riveting question that we ask every episode. And it goes Is it real? Me and that guy would like to know, Megan, if you think Franklin Castle is real. All right. So for this one, I think I'm going to say maybe 50-50. I think a lot of this is allegedly and supposedly and claims. Now, do people have experiences here? Sure. I don't see why not. Hold on. Hold on. Okay. So if people have experiences here, wouldn't that mean you're saying it's haunted? I'm saying, I mean, yes. I mean, I do think that there is something there. Did I just throw a wrench in the cogs? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I was like, I was going back and forth with this one. So maybe people do have experiences or we have experiences in our house. I just, I don't fully believe that the stories that are around this place are is maybe going on there. Okay. I don't know. I'm just kind of up in the air on this one. So are you saying it is haunted, but you don't believe the stories? Or are you saying it's not haunted, but there's still hauntings? I'm not. I'm just trying to. <laughs> I don't know try, what I'm trying to I'm say. Just trying to think, I'm just trying to figure it out. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't know. This one's kind of got me. <laughs> it does. It's haunted, but not haunted, but kind of haunted, but not really haunted. And the stories are real, but not real, but kind of real, somewhat real. <laughs> it's fine. Here, I'll tell you, we'll throw it back to me. I'll give you my answer. You think about it. Okay. So I think there are more to the legends than there are the hauntings. I think that, I don't think it's very haunted. I don't think it's haunted at all, actually. I think it's got a great story. I think that. It's only because the public devised this, you know, they concocted a story about the original owner and how he was, you know, a rapist and a killer. And it kind of sways people to see what they want to see at that point. Mm -hmm. I think, but I do think it's a really cool place and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it is haunted, but I, I personally don't have enough to say that I think there's anything going on there because a lot of people have been there. And haven't had stories. And it seems like for everything that I read saying it was haunted, I would get a direct article saying that exactly that same thing was not true. So it's hard to know what is real and what isn't there. So 
as far as I'm concerned. I'm just going to go with no, unless I go there and I'm proven wrong. Or if you are a listener and you've been there and you can prove me wrong, that's fine too. I'd love to be wrong. I want more haunted places, you know, more opportunities to prove that thing, things are out there. But for me, it's a big, fat no. Okay. So that was what I was trying to say is that I think a lot of the stories have maybe put it in people's heads that they are having something happen. Okay. So, yeah, that's where I was going with that. I <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I'm sleepy today. <laughs> they can't all be great. They can't oh, all be winners, okay? I think that was pretty great, honestly. <laughs> I, I, I love it. This is this is good. Yeah. I'm just going to keep letting you talk. <laughs> no, go, thanks. <laughs> go for it, babe. <laughs> no, thanks. So I think it's safe to say that Franklin Castle is going to get a big old no from us this week, unfortunately. Yes. I, d- I do think that, but for sure. A, but hey, it is a cool story. You know? It is. And it's got a, I mean, who loves a little murder mystery, you know? I, yeah. Who, who doesn't love it, I guess I'm trying to say. This is a great one. I'm happy we did it. It's different. I learned some stuff today, so it, it's a win-win. I like the history on this place. I think yeah. it's really cool. I think, you know, they were living in a tiny little house on the property and while they were building it and he kind of built it for his wife. Yeah. Well, hopefully and and supposedly it, it wasn't just like a sex trap. Did some other things. But I, I do, I do want to like, before we end this episode, I want to, I want to go back to like the people using people using this place as a place to make uh pornography. Uh, <laughs> okay. Not the Nazi man. spies. I mean, the Nazi thing is one thing, but uh, they were filming I'm, I'm, don't let your kids listen to the show, but they were filming pornos there. Like, come on. That's crazy. Castleborn. <laughs> That's, were there medieval knights there? I'm stuck on the medieval knight thing. I can't help it. But I mean, this is so weird. It is weird. That is so weird. That would make for some um, strange adult entertainment. That's for sure. Man. I'll be right back. I'm going to go look for this. No. <laughs> <laughs> So anyways, Don't do it. Anyways, where can they find us? They can find us on Instagram at for the booze underscore podcast and on Facebook at for the booze. Oh, they can also find us on Twitter at for the booze and over on YouTube at for the booze and also uh, for the booze 12 at gmail.com. If you would like to send in a listener suggestion or a listener story like Joe and next week's story. <gasps> You'll get his name next week, and I've been talking to him, and we are going to get a few more, so I'm I'm excited. Yay. And uh, don't forget, still looking for people who might have a a little bit of an artist side to themselves to draw up a a new, like, logo for the show. Still still going to do that until somebody starts sending some stuff. And and I'm going to pre-announce this. I'm not going to tell you exactly what it's for, but if you haven't heard of a company called Creepy Crate... It is a monthly subscription uh, service that you can do kind of like a hunt a killer. But it's not a game. It's more like, uh, you know, if you're into creepy stuff and you want to get some like cre- creepy horror stuff every month in a subscription box, this is the one for you. So check it out. And, Super uh, cool. Maybe you'll hear more about that. But go check them out anyways. It seems um, the only reason I'm saying it now is because I think it's cool. Yeah. And I would for sure totally probably do it if, <laughs> if we weren't going to move. So I guess that's. That's going to be it. Not haunted. And we got to listen to Megan talk in a circle for five minutes. So yeah. that was awesome. Sorry, I got stuck on a loop there, guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a little, I had a little brain glitch. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess this is going to take us out. And, uh, uh, yeah, so I guess this is it. It is. Well, thank you, everybody, so very much for listening. And I guess we will, as always, see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye. Bye.